Good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a famous attacking game played by American chess grandmaster 11th world chess champion Robert James Fisher. Earlier we have already seen several marvelous attacking games where Fisher used king's indian attack and this one is not an exception. In this game again we are going to see that powerful setup. Fischer's opponent is Argentine chess grandmaster Oscar Pano. The game was played in 1970 in Buenos Aires. The future world chess champion opened up with e4 to which Pano answered with c5. Sicilian defense is on the board against which Fischer applies his favorite king's indian attack. Oops, in here we have to make a move by black, right? g3, g6. So this is a very venomous setup which can create too many problems for black. You have to know the defensive ideas well in order to stop this unstoppable force. After Pano's castling kingside, Fischer established a classical pawn center and d5 was met with e5 locking up the position. The setup reminds me of French defense, but this is different with fianchettoed kingside bishops. But even so, the ideas used in French defense can be used in here as well. For example, in here, a standard idea of undermining white center with f6 can be used, of course, but Bono had different uh, intentions and he played rook c8. He wants to go for a queenside attack, yeah, he wants to try his luck on the queenside, but let me tell you that at this point still playing f6 is something worth of taking into consideration. Uh, the thing is that in this type of positions organizing a queenside attack is not that easy and usually time shows that white manages to successfully oppress opponent's attack. Uh, knight a c6 was met with g4. There it goes, already white is hurrying to organize a kingside attack at the same time. Now white knight can land on g3 with his next move, yes. Uh, Fischer put his knight on g3, queen b6, and there it goes, h4. Playing this position with the white pieces is of course very easy, while from black side, yeah. It's not that easy to find the right path, right? It's not that easy to develop long-term strategic ideas. Bishop h6. It's clear, of course, that if you can get rid of opponent's uh, kingside bishop, then you can make his kingside vulnerable, and that's something which Fischer wants to do. Instead of queen g5, Stockfish suggests either h5 or first bishop takes g7 and then h5. But uh, queen g5 is also a good continuation. Here Pano went for rook takes c1 and only then played bishop takes a6. Okay, black's dark squared bishop is gone and that gives white great chances. The second pair of rooks is also gone. Yeah, seems like that under Pano understands that this is not going to end up well and he hurries to enter our end game he hurries to exchange the heavy artillery h5 by fisher and queen d8 uh chicken move you know maybe he was uh he wanted to play a move like queen f8 in order to trade off the queens as well but there is no time for it instead of queen d8 better move is knight f8 an old quote says that when there is a knight on f8 there is no checkmate, but after h5 we have queen d8 move, knight g5, already we have a direct mating threat. That's why Bono neutralized the threat and now a question arises how should Fischer proceed. Please pause the video and try to find his next moves. Ready? Now look, if it weren't this pawn on d5 then you could play for example knight e4 and then knight f6 check and then win this pawn and that could lead to a checkmate right that's why in order to bring into life that idea fischer played 
Bishop e4, yes, turns out that the e4 square is not under control and white bishop lands on that central square. Uh, we have one last piece which is not doing anything and we have to switch it into the attack. We have to invite this bishop to join the party. Bishop e4, a fantastic move, right? Parno didn't dare to accept the sacrifice played queen e7, but what if... Uh, d takes e4, then after knight takes e4 there is just no defense for black. Knight f6 is coming and it's over. And then knight g takes h7. Of course if you won't give up your queen. Uh, in our game we have queen e7 move by Bano. And let me tell you that already at this point there is a threat of going for a sacrifice on g6. For example I just want you to understand what is white threatening. Let's make a random move, a4. Then white can play h takes g6, and if h takes g6, then knight h5 is winning. If here, then check, and then knight f7 checkmate, right? After h takes g6, uh, if a move like f takes g6, then even in here, knight h5 works, and you are winning. Looks like that knight h7 is also winning, but knight h5 is the shortest possible way of uh, winning the game. And then bishop takes g6. If here, then check. King h8, knight takes h7. This is a total destruction, guys. There is no way out. Uh, let's go back. Uh, but in our game, after bishop e4, we have queen e7 moved by Pano. Uh, and now you have to be careful because h takes g6 doesn't work, black has f takes g6 move and there is no knight h5 move because of this d takes e4 and black is successfully managing to neutralize the attack, black is even better. That's why at this point Fischer played knight takes h7, although turns out that there is also a move like knight f5, this is very interesting. Knight takes h7 is on the board, knight takes h7, h takes g6. Once black king is deprived from its pawn shelter, victory becomes matter of moves. Now if queen h7, then bishop takes h7 check and then queen takes e6. In our game after bishop takes g6 with knight g5 answer, and there follows knight h5. Knight f3 check, king g2, knight h4 check. King g3, knight takes g6, and let me tell you that Fischer is playing very accurately, you know, there are no flaws in this attack. Probably it, it's in here that Fischer is uh, making the only inaccuracy, he's playing king g3, turns out that king h2 or king h1 are allowing to announce checkmate faster, but from a human point of view, oh sorry, in here we have knight f6 check, but from a human point of view, you know, making an attacking move moving forward is sometimes tempting. And you know, in games of humans, it's not that important. You will announce checkmate in 12 or 13. That's our just engine's uh, evaluations. Yeah, a very, very accurate game by Fischer. After knight f6 check we have king f7 and a queen h7 check put an end to this brilliant attack. If king f8 then queen g8 checkmate. Um, would like to suggest to take a look at the attack once again. So after h5 we have queen d8 and there comes knight g5. Knight f8, bishop e4, queen e7, knight takes h7 and then h takes g6. This bishop and the knight are doing nothing, you know, while all white pieces are attacking and this is how Fischer finished up his opponent. A very in instructive game, of course, for those who are playing King's Indian attack. It will be very good to carefully analyze all the games where Fischer played this opening, this system. Uh, in the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video.